One of the many benefits of attending baseball games at Dietrich Park is you never know who you're likely to meet. You shouldn't live in the past. It's dangerous. But to visit it is a just a, a wonderful experience. Before we begin, yes. I want to say hello to Bob, Mindy, Bukowski, Dandies, and most of all, my buddy Kevin Hart. Oh, how Buffalo loves its jewel. Buffalo rates number one in field of expansion. I think it's a great facility. Oh, Benny DiStefano led the team with 19 homers and 63 RBI. And then obviously being part of the uh, first ever Triple A All-Star game. Field is the home of the first Triple A All-Star baseball game. Representatives as Benny DiStefano. I mean, getting in the batter's box, Roy Smith was pitching, someone who I played at Sandlot Ball with, and we gave a smirk to each other. All of a sudden, hearing everyone cheering, and we turn and look down the right field line, and there's Morgana coming, and you know, that's another, you know, memory I'll always have. <laughs> that wasn't the only special attention for one of the Bison's All Stars, though. DiStefano became the envy of all his teammates when he was visited by baseball's kissing bandit, Morgana prior to his first at bat. <laughs> it was what did you awesome. think? I mean, you're, there you are after the announcement, ladies and gentlemen, representing the... Uh, I, I was distracted and, and, and me and my, I could see Roy Smith laughing at me, was smiling, and uh, when I looked at the video, I turned red. Uh, I spoke to my parents that night because, and, and that's, during that time, it was the only major league, only professional baseball game uh, on TV in the country that night, um, was a triple all-star game. Then the next night was a major league all-star game so it was just you know had a lot of um, people call me up it was just su such a memorable time it's just an incredible experience and I'm one of those type of um, I'm a very tough competitor but off the field I'm very easy going and you can pull pranks on and I give the prank so um, I obviously I took a like hearted and, and it, it was just a great time to, to get me on a great experience. Did she say anything to you? Yes yeah, she, she, you know she said I was a good sport she sat on my uh, lap in a dugout, we did a little interview, and it was just it was a lot of fun because I've seen, a, you know, in the past, give celebrities kisses and be out in sporting events. So it was a lot of fun. How did you dig in after that? I hit a little pop at the center field, <laughs> <laughs> but we had a lot of fun. What happened was, um, I, we, I was with the Astros in '92. I first got called up. It was the end of April, um, and Coney had a no hitter. I faced Coney in the minor leagues, and we knew each other a long time. And you know, an outstanding pitcher, obviously, great career. And um, we were losing three, I think, three nothing at the time. And it was one out in the eighth inning. He had a no hitter going. And, you know, he started me off with a fork ball. I'll never forget it. And he had two and all on me. And all I could think was, Coney, he's going to throw me that fastball. I'm going to drop the head. I'm hitting out of the ballpark. I'm pulling the foul. And so he, I saw the ball come out of his hand. And I was, I was swinging out of my shoes. And I hit it off the end of the bat. I cued it just like, you, you know, you're playing pool. And it cued about 45 feet down the third base line and stopped right in the middle, and Dave Madigan couldn't do nothing. Yeah. But uh, Johnny Franco was ragging me the next day all about it because we went to high school together. 